Hello Immortal News family, and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents, and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 5. Lynn Yamada Davis, widely known for her Cooking with Linya TikTok videos, passed away on January 1st at Riverview Medical Center in New Jersey. Her passing was publicly announced today. She was 67 years old. Her unique and joyful approach to cooking, combined with her zany humor, earned her a massive following, making her a social media sensation. Born on July 31st, 1956, in New York City, Lynn lived most of her early life in Fort Lee, New Jersey. A woman of remarkable intellect and drive, she graduated from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1977 with a degree in civil engineering, followed by an MBA and a public health degree from Columbia University. Her professional life was distinguished by her groundbreaking work as a female engineer in telecommunications. Lynn's foray into the world of social media began during the pandemic lockdown in 2020, when she, alongside her youngest son, Tim Davis, created the Cooking with Linya videos. This initiative was not only a way to keep Tim's cinematography skills sharp, but also became a medium for Lynn to connect with millions worldwide. Her videos, characterized by quirky dance moves and an engaging personality, quickly amassed a huge following. Despite being diagnosed with throat cancer in 2019, which altered her voice, and later with esophageal cancer, Lynn continued to inspire and entertain. Her strength and resilience shone through her content as she often shared her journey with her followers, including baking cookies for the medical staff who treated her. Lynn's impact extended beyond social media. She was recognized on Forbes's 50 Over 50 list, and won Streamy Awards for editing and food. Her influence was global, evident from the recognition she received on her travels. Survived by her children, Hannah Schofet, Tim and Sean Davis, Becky Steinberg, her husband Keith Davis, siblings Jay Yamada and Karen Dolce Yamada, and grandchildren, Lynn's legacy is profound. She showed that it's never too late to start a new chapter and that joy and laughter can be powerful medicine. Tribute to Lynn Yamada Davis. Number 4. Teresa Magdalena Tisa Faro, an American actress and model, passed away at the age of 72, leaving behind a legacy in the world of cinema and modeling. Born in Los Angeles, California, she was the youngest daughter of the Irish-born actress Maureen O'Sullivan and Australian-born film director John Farrow. Growing up in a household surrounded by creativity and talent, Tisa embarked on her own artistic journey distinguishing herself in both acting and modeling. Her early life was marked by a strict Catholic education, followed by her bold decision to leave school in the 11th grade to pursue her aspirations. Her initial struggles in the entertainment industry, often overshadowed by her sister Mia Farrow's success, did not deter her. Her perseverance paid off when she landed her first film role in Homer. Farrow's career spanned a variety of genres and international productions, she starred in René Clément's and Hope to Die, and showcased her versatility in the drama, Some Call It Loving, and the comedy, Only God Knows. The late 1970s saw Tisa venturing into Italian cinema, starring in films such as the action thriller, Strange Shadows in an Empty Room, and the horror film, The Initiation of Sarah. Her collaboration with James Toback in the film Fingers, alongside Harvey Keitel, and her role in the Canadian film Search and Destroy are notable highlights of her career. Her cameo in Woody Allen's Manhattan was followed by significant roles in Italian genre films like Lucio Fulci's Zombie 2, Antonio Margheriti's The Last Hunter, and Joe D'Amato's Anthropophagus. Her contributions to the Italian horror genre, in particular, earned her a cult following, 
and solidified her place in the annals of horror cinema. Tisa Farrow's journey in the entertainment world was marked by her resilience, versatility, and an undeniable presence that captured the hearts of audiences. Her work in both American and Italian cinema leaves a memorable mark on the industry, and her legacy will continue to inspire future generations of actresses. Tribute to Tisa Farrow. Number 3. Bud Harrelson, a symbol of resilience and determination in the world of baseball, passed away at the age of 79 after a brave battle with Alzheimer's. A cornerstone of the New York Mets, Harrelson's legacy transcends the field, marked by his tenacity and spirit both on and off the diamond. Best known as the scrappy and sure-handed shortstop, Harrelson was a pivotal figure in the Mets' astonishing 1969 World Series victory. His light bat belied a fierce competitive nature, which famously came to the fore in the 1973 NL Championship Series brawl with Pete Rose, showcasing his never-back-down attitude. Beyond his prowess on the field, Harrelson's off-field achievements are equally commendable. His role as a part owner of the Long Island Ducks, an independent minor league team, was a labor of love that he often cited as his greatest baseball accomplishment. He remained passionately involved with the Ducks, bringing the same dedication he had shown as a player and coach. His journey with the Mets was storied and multifaceted. He was not just a player but also a coach and manager, influencing generations of players with his insights and experience. His induction into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1986 alongside Rusty Staub was a testament to his profound impact on the franchise. Despite his diagnosis in 2016, Harrelson's indomitable spirit never wavered, he openly shared his struggles with Alzheimer's, contributing significantly to raising awareness about the condition. His presence at Mets games, even as his health waned, spoke volumes about his love for the game and the people around him. As we remember Bud Harrelson, we celebrate a man who was not just a gifted athlete but also a fighter, a mentor, and an inspiration. His journey from the baseball diamond to his courageous battle with Alzheimer's will continue to inspire and remind us of the power of perseverance in the human spirit. Tribute to Bud Harrelson. Number 2. Conrad Palmasano, a celebrated Hollywood stuntman, stunt coordinator, and director, passed away on January 10th at the age of 75. Palmasano's illustrious career spanned several decades, contributing his talents to over 200 projects, leaving a profound impact on the film industry. His remarkable journey in the world of stunts included work on iconic films like The Jerk, 21 Jump Street, and significant roles as a stunt coordinator in movies such as Red Dragon, No Strings Attached, My Sister's Keeper, Romeo Must Die, Sleepless in Seattle, and the memorable Weekend at Bernie's. His television credits also were extensive, including shows like JAG, Ghost Whisperer, Chaos, Bosch, and NCIS. As the president of the Stuntmen's Association, Palmasano was not just a participant but a leading figure in the stunt community. He once reflected on the thrill and challenges of his profession, highlighting the adrenaline rush and the recognition it brought, often comparing it to the more traditional forms of acting. Beyond his stunt work, Palmisano was a strong advocate for the recognition of stuntmen at the Oscars, underscoring the importance and risks involved in their work. His efforts extended to being an active member of the Academy and SAG-AFTRA, where he served on the board particularly focusing on stunt and safety issues. His life before Hollywood was equally commendable. Born on May 1, 1948, and raised in the San Fernando Valley, he joined the Marines at 17 and served in the Vietnam War. 
This background perhaps laid the foundation for his fearless and dedicated approach in his later career. His achievements were recognized by his peers, evident in the Lifetime Achievement Award he received from the Taurus World Stunt Awards. Conrad Palmisano passed away surrounded by his loving family, leaving behind a legacy that includes three daughters, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. His contributions to the art of filmmaking and his advocacy for stunt performers' recognition will be remembered and cherished. Tribute to Conrad Palmisano. Today's top headlines, News 1. The sudden passing of Parasite actor Lee Sun Kyun has sent shockwaves through the film community, prompting urgent calls for an investigation. The 48-year-old star was found unresponsive in his car on December 27, 2023, in a Seoul park. Renowned director Bong Joon-ho, who directed Lee in the Academy Award-winning film, is among those advocating for a thorough examination of the events leading to Lee's death. The newly formed Association of Solidarity of Cultural Artists, backed by Bong and other influential figures in South Korea's entertainment sector, demands clarity and a deeper look into the circumstances of Lee's passing. They emphasize the need for dignified journalism and legal protections for artists. Lee Sun Kyun, celebrated for his role in Parasite as the head of the Park family, left a lasting impact on the film industry. The community grieves this loss and seeks answers to bring closure to this tragic event. News 2 Lauren Dusky, renowned for her performance on season 12 of The Voice, is grieving the loss of her mother Janice who passed away at 59. In an emotional Instagram tribute, Dusky celebrated her mother's life, sharing her remarkable achievements and the profound impact she had on those around her. Janice was a prominent figure excelling in her academic and professional life, including serving as a captain in the United States Air Force and spearheading the Wolverine Patriot Project, providing dental care to veterans. Known for her wisdom and humor, she earned the affectionate nickname Yoda from her family. In her tribute, Lauren emphasized the importance of mental health awareness, urging open conversations and support for those struggling. She highlighted the significance of expressing love and the lasting impact of kindness and understanding. Lauren's heartfelt message serves as a reminder of the importance of cherishing loved ones and the need for mental health support and awareness. News 3. Yuri Solomon, a celebrated Russian actor, director, and former minister of culture, has passed away at the age of 88 in his Moscow home. His illustrious career spanned over several decades, marked by significant contributions to stage, television, and film. Solomon was revered as the artistic director of the Maley Theatre from 1988 until his passing. Solomon's vast array of roles included over 50 performances at the Maley Theatre and appearances in more than 60 films and TV series. He is fondly remembered for his roles in Melodies of a White Knight, An Ordinary Miracle, and particularly in Dersu Uzala, directed by Akira Kurosawa. Solomon, who suffered a stroke in November 2023, was recently released from the hospital and will be laid to rest. News 4 Dodgers fans can look forward to the return of pitcher Walker Buehler, who missed the entire 2023 season due to Tommy John surgery. Dodgers executive Andrew Friedman shared a positive update, noting Buehler's recovery is on track. Known for his remarkable skills, including all-star selections in 2019 and 2021, Buehler's comeback is eagerly awaited. The team plans a cautious approach to his return, possibly delaying his season start to ensure he's ready for the postseason. Despite this, signs of Bueller's vintage form have been evident in his rehab. The Dodgers, having bolstered their rotation with Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Tyler Glasnow, will manage Bueller's workload carefully with a focus on postseason readiness. Bueller's contribution is expected to be pivotal for the Dodgers' success in the upcoming season. News 5. Bernard Cecil Cohen, a renowned political scientist and former acting chancellor of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, passed away at 97 in Madison. Cohen, recognized for his influential work in political science and academia, 
served as acting chancellor in 1987. His book, The Press and Foreign Policy, critically analyzed the media's impact on U.S. foreign policy, influencing the field for decades. Cohen's career at UW-Madison spanned 30 years, including roles as department chair, vice chancellor, and associate dean. His tenure as chancellor was marked by proactive responses to campus incidents and the growth of the Chancellor's Scholarship Program. He returned to academia after serving as chancellor, retiring in 1989. Born in Northampton, Massachusetts, Cohen held degrees from Yale University and taught at Princeton before joining UW-Madison. His scholarly contributions include several books, with Democracies and Foreign Policy being his last publication. He is survived by his wife, Laura, daughters, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. News 6. Raymond John Zane, a prominent New Jersey politician, passed away at 84 on January 8th. Serving in the New Jersey State Senate from 1974 to 2002, he represented the 3rd Legislative District. Initially a Democrat, Zane switched to the Republican Party in 2001, but was defeated in the subsequent election. A Woodbury native, Zane pursued a brief professional baseball career before turning to politics. He graduated from St. Joseph's College and Rutgers School of Law Camden. His career included roles such as the Assistant Majority Leader and Deputy Minority Leader in the Senate. Zane's political journey was marked by significant legislative contributions and controversies, including party disputes and shifts in county contracts. His final campaign in 2001 was noted as New Jersey's most expensive legislative race at the time, News 7. Renowned Hollywood publicist Quinn Donahue passed away at 86 on December 28 in Los Angeles. His career spanned significant work in film publicity, including contributions to Superman, The Pink Panther, and The Three Musketeers. He also served as a unit publicist for directors like Norman Jewison, Roman Polanski, and Ridley Scott on films such as Fiddler on the Roof and Gladiator. In addition to publicity, Donahue produced films and wrote for television, including The Triplets. He spent much of his life in Europe, working with notable figures and writing books like Bless Me Father, For I Have Sinned, and Leprechaun Sorrows, A Magical History of Ireland. He leaves behind his wife Katya and children Greg, Natasha, Sophie, Sean, and Siobhan. News 8. Ophelia Valdez Yeager, an influential Latina leader and prominent arts fundraiser, passed away at 76. She played a pivotal role in establishing the Riverside Art Museum's Cheech Marin Center for Chicano Art and Culture. Valdez Yeager, who battled a rare form of anemia, made a lasting impact as the first Latina on the local school board. Born in Tayaltita, Mexico, she became the first in her family to graduate college, earning her degree from UC Riverside in 1969. Her dedication to education and the arts was profound, as she held various leadership roles in cultural institutions and city administration. Her husband, Leigh Yeager, remembers her as a fighter and a warrior, highlighting her strong will and dedication to community service. The couple met at UC Riverside and shared a life committed to education and community enrichment. News 9. Rock legend Ozzy Osbourne has shared a promising update on his health with musician Billy Morrison on the Osbourne's podcast. Despite a tough battle with Parkinson's disease and recent spinal surgeries, the 75-year-old Osborne revealed his blood clots have cleared and his health is improving. He mentioned, My blood clots are gone. Everything's back to normal. I just gotta get my balance going now. After a significant spinal surgery in September 2023, Osborne has decided it will be his last, aiming for a recovery without further surgeries. He humorously commented on his recovery process, it's a slow recovery because I'm not as young as I used to be. This update marks a positive turn in Osborne's health journey, much to the relief of his fans worldwide. News 10. Michael Strahan, former NFL star and TV personality, shared on Good Morning America the challenging news of his daughter Isabella's health. The 19-year-old was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, a rare brain tumor, during her freshman year at the University of Southern California. After experiencing severe symptoms, Isabella underwent surgery and proton therapy, successfully completing her treatment sessions. Reflecting on this difficult period, Michael Strahan emphasized the importance of family support and resilience in facing life's challenges. Isabella plans to start chemotherapy soon, 
and aims to return to college after her treatment. She has also started a YouTube channel to document her journey and offer hope to others facing similar battles. News 11. Tom's River, New Jersey mourns the loss of its iconic local celebrity, Sandra Fortunato, known as Miss Liberty. A staple in community events and parades, she was famous for her lavish outfits and her sign-plastered Cadillac. Fortunato, who once served as a mascot for the New York Giants, was recognized for her patriotic ensembles and cheerful presence. Despite her recent health struggles, she continued to participate in local events, including the renowned Tom's River Halloween Parade. Her passing marks the end of an era for the Tom's River community, where she was a beloved figure known for bringing joy and a unique flair to every occasion. News 12. Yvonne Michelle Simmons, a revered Hall of Fame girls basketball coach at Carver Montgomery, passed away at the age of 70 after battling a prolonged illness. The Alabama High School Athletic Association confirmed her death, remembering her as a beacon of positivity and a passionate advocate for basketball and her students. Simmons' illustrious coaching career began in 1985 at Carver. Over her 29-year tenure, she led the Wolverines to an impressive 558 victories, including a state championship in 1993 and three runner-up finishes. Her teams appeared in 12 state tournaments, cementing her legacy in high school basketball. Simmons also broke barriers as the first woman to become athletic director in the Montgomery County school system, a role she held from 1998 until her retirement in 2014. Her significant contributions to high school sports were recognized with her induction into the Alabama High School Sports Hall of Fame in 2021. Number 1. Lawrence Beatty an actress of remarkable talent and versatility, passed away at the age of 96, leaving behind a legacy that touched the hearts of many. Her unique, high-pitched voice became her trademark, enchanting generations of audiences in a career that spanned cartoons, game shows, classical repertoire, boulevard theater, and cinema. Beatty's voice was one that many grew up with, especially those who fondly remember her as the voice of Vera in the beloved cartoon series, Scooby-Doo. Her ability to bring characters to life through her vocal expressions was unparalleled, making her a cherished figure in the world of voice acting. Beyond Scooby-Doo, she lent her voice to other memorable characters, such as Casper the Friendly Ghost and the dog Rocky, becoming an integral part of many childhoods. However, Beatty's talents were not confined to voice acting alone. She graced the stage and screen with her presence in over a hundred films, series, and television movies. Working with great filmmakers like Sacha Guitry, François Truffaut, Vincente Minelli, Alain Resnay, and Vittorio De Sica, she portrayed a range of characters that showcased her acting prowess. A highlight of her career was her time at Jean Villard's Théâtre National Populaire, where she worked alongside legends like Gérard Philippe, Philippe Noiret, and Maria Cassaret. This period was a testament to her dedication to her craft and her ability to learn and grow in the company of some of the finest actors of the time. Her role in the renowned film Je Interdit, directed by René Clément, is yet another testament to her versatility and range as an actress. Moreover, her portrayal in the play Oscar alongside Louis de Funès, directed by Pierre Mondi, marked a significant achievement in her theatrical career. Beatty's unique voice and remarkable talent in both voice acting and on-screen performances made her an unforgettable figure in the entertainment industry. Her contributions to the arts have left a lasting impression, and her memory will continue to live on in the hearts of those who admired her work. Tribute to Lawrence Beatty, 